again everyone! Because it's been a long time since our last progress video, we have a motley of things to show you today. A lot of the work shown in this video is thanks to the incredible work done by Nikoto, so please give him a round of applause for his dedication towards the project. <laughs> Before we get into the updates, we just want to remind everyone that we are still looking for C-sharp programmers and vector artists. We need C-sharp programmers who are familiar with or can learn Unity, and we need vector artists who can vectorize raster assets. If you or anyone you know is interested, please check out our general and programmer applications in the description below. Thank you! With that out of the way, let's get into the updates! Let's start off small with some art updates! We have added a new vector artist to the team by the name Sangrid, who has been hard at work recreating the starting shirts from scratch. She has finished both the gadgetry fan and magic fan shirts. Here they are in their vectorized glory. Not just the thumbnails have been remade, but the entire shirt sprite pieces themselves, ready for any pet pet new to the park to purchase at the tutorial shop. Sangrave also finished vectorizing the thumbnails of the other starter shirts, besides the adventuring fan shirt, but the actual wearable pieces are not finished yet. Speaking of which, here's an updated screenshot of the shop with the vectorized shirts in place, courtesy of Nikoto. <laughs> Other assets, like some of the starting gift items, needed to be reassembled as they came in separate pieces within their swifts. This work was completed by Navi. Look at how clean these items look as SVGs! They still need to be ported into Unity and implemented into the item database. For programmers, we have two new recruits, Fukuru and Liddy. Nikoto assisted Liddy in adjusting, and now Liddy is working on the dialogue system. Fukuru currently hasn't decided what he's going to work on. Honky worked with Nikoto, experimenting with hover button animations, quick fixes for park point square tiles, and exported UI assets for the programmers to utilize. Luigi has continued work on miscellaneous tasks, preparing SVGs to be used in Unity along with other Swifts. Well, Nikoto has been taking these assets and has been rebuilding Winsela's house, park point square, and most recently, Market Lane. Here's some screenshots. There's still a work in progress. General Help has also been working on porting over our tasks and organization over to Udo because Trello has updated its TOS that limits how many people can be on a Trello board at once. It's important to note that due to complications regarding Uniswift that requires Swift files to be modified with labels to code animation change functionality, that the programmers are not focusing on programming play on hover animations just yet. But they will be added soon once the artists have started implementing labels for the appropriate animations. Due to inactivity from other dev members because of life responsibilities, the rest of the updates will be Nikoto's work. You all saw a little sneak peek in the previous video, but Nikoto developed early versions of the furniture placement system. Currently, you can place, rotate, remove, and even stack furniture on top of each other. Nikoto is very proud of his work, which you can see on screen here. You may be wondering why Nikoto decided to work on Home and Gardens content before the tutorial is even complete, and there are two primary reasons why. The first reason is motivation, as Nakoto likes to work on things he is motivated to work on. The second reason is also because of holdups regarding progress on the tutorial zone, therefore Nakoto thought it was best to work on other areas of the game where his progress would not be stalled. Nakoto was really determined to get the furniture system to work through blood, sweat, and tears, but it also required refining another system for it to function properly. In tandem with the furniture placement system, Nakoto also took a crack at updating and improving Aesether's player movement code. This involved updating layers so players can properly walk and move behind different foreground objects. Not just that, but this layering update also lets players walk them down different map levels, such as going up and down stairs in, say, the university store. Besides just player pathfinding movement and layering, Nikoto has also made excellent headway into the multiplayer capabilities of the game. He's updated the chat system so whatever a player types will show up in their own little chat bubble, but even better is this. The game now has the capability for players to log into the server and join the game. Yes, the footage you're seeing right now is two different players with their own accounts logging into the server into the same instance. 
This is huge progress, as this means we have a server build to develop on. By using a Unity plugin called Parallel Sync, you can have multiple Unity windows open and basically use them to connect to a server to run on the same machine to test things like netcode. However, it's important to preface that we do not have a main server that other computers can connect to just yet. And these connections here are facilitated through Nakoto's own computer until we decide on a server hosting option. Speaking of accounts, Nikoto's worked on the ability for players to have multiple pet pets per account like in the original game. This means that every player can have at least four different pet pets, each with their own stats, items, quest progress, and more. This allows more freedom with exploring different paths or styles without having to sacrifice things on a different account or being forced to make a completely new player account. Nikoto would also like to note that the limit of four pet pets is a quote-unquote proposed minimum, as technically there isn't a limit set as to how many pet pets a single account can have. The limit is currently four since that is how many pet pets the original game allowed. To log into an account, you of course need a password, but how is your password secure even from the people hosting the server your account is on? Well, our database, like pretty much any other database, will use password hashing. Password hashing is essentially where the password is saved, but essentially scrambled beyond recognition. This prevents people with access to the server to see the raw passwords, keeping said passwords secure. Email hashing is also a thing if we want to be extra safe, but Nakoto is currently prioritizing password hashing as it is much more important for data security. And now for the finale of this video. Nakoto finished working on our first minigame recreation, Nearball. Yes, the minigame has been 100% recreated with every level added, music and sound effects implemented, and even the scoring system for how many park points you'd be granted for your score. Do note that we haven't added the scene transition into the minigame yet for the park entrance, but will be in the future. Here's some gameplay footage of the recreated minigame. Enjoy! We hope you enjoy this update video, and we hope it gives you assurance that we are still very much working on the game. It has just been difficult with the recent labor shortage, but hopefully the rest of the summer will be productive. If you want to check out our other videos and updates, please click on one of the end cards on screen. Thanks for watching!